Hello guys, welcome to another video with Cass on the Mismo channel. So today I've got something quite unexpected to show you and I believe it will require a little bit of your attention. Uh, so I try to, I'll try to guide you through this entire process and show you how amazing this uh, ridiculous component is. <laughs> it's kind of a component that does everything and I found it by accident. So let's start. So what I have here in front of me is uh, one of the oldest components known uh, in Minecraft uh, for a specific purpose. Uh, some, some people have a, a complicated name for this, but I like to call it just a latch. What a latch does is uh, once you click somewhere, it latches on to, to its value. So as you can see, it changes the state. And if I keep giving it the same input, it will not change. Uh, you have to click the other button and then the, the device will change states but then uh, it will stay in this specific uh, state. So this is what the latch does. Here's another variation of the same exact thing. So it's the same the, the same thing you see back there, but uh, this one has the advantage of having this in here. So we can have a lamp uh, to read the output or even have torches on top and get an output from this. So yeah, for instance, this could be uh, a memory unit. So uh, you send a pulse and this pulse will be turned into a constant signal in here you convert this uh, so this could be a little memory unit uh, or this could take care of uh, input uh, from the player for instance when the player clicks something something gets activated and then uh, the player is not capable of breaking the machine because even if the player keeps pressing the button nothing will happen and then when the machine is done doing whatever it needs to do then the machine will automatically reset this giving the player the power to activate it once again so while playing around with this really old school little device um, yeah I, I made this so uh, hopefully you guys noticed that I uh, I'm trying to use blue blocks to represent any uh, new stuff that I introduced to the circuit. So the white, uh, the white blocks are the things that you have already seen. The blue things are the, the new, the things that are introduced just now. So I just hooked up the latch to a different kind of input. In this case, you can see that when I press this button, uh, the bottom will get powered, and then one redstone tick later, the top will also get powered. So yeah, in this case, it won't do anything. It doesn't make a lot of sense, but this will make more sense when we start uh, checking out how components like this interact with each other in a array such as this. <laughs> uh, so as you can see here, uh, I hooked up all of the latches uh, from the bottom in here, but they are also connected to the top of the circuit individually. So when I press the button, uh, everyone will get powered uh, but then they will also get individual power. So what happens in here is if I press this button uh, This cell gets selected and then if I press another button same happens and uh, as you can see it's, it's quite fast if you look at the redstone dust back there So at the same time as one turns off the other one turns on so this makes for a cool selector It will reset every cell at the same time that, as it selects one so while playing with this, I tried different pulse lengths instead of using just a button, and then I found something surprising. Okay, so here is the, the little cell isolated once again. So if I flick the lever, uh, it sets the cell and will reset everything around it. And if I keep doing this, uh, it will keep the same cell selected. And this happens for any pulse length, except for a two tick pulse. So if I set this guy to be a two tick pulse, then every time I interact with it, it changes the state. And when something gets the same pulse over and over again and keeps changing its internal state, we know this as a T flip flop. So this is where things started getting ridiculous because this component is so old and I have never ever heard that it can behave as a T flip flop in such a simple arrangement uh, such as this. Uh, what people do for silence and uh, old school uh, T flip flops is usually to use some kind of clock that you, you pause the clock half, uh, on half cycles and, uh, and such. But with this one, <laughs> the timings are just weird and this is not a locational or directional thing. So I don't know if this is a bug or anything, but I tested it in many different locations uh, and different orientations and it works everywhere. So this is an incredibly simple T flip flop. So yeah, once I learned about this behavior, I started exploring it. 
this is what I decided to test next. So this is the, the second form of the same latch that I showed you guys in the beginning. So yeah, I just made a bunch of those together and decided to do only this. I take uh, the output from the latch and hook it back up to this repeater in here. So I can always give my inputs to this guy, but then this guy will decide if I can give the input to the next guy. As you can see, every uh, repeater in here is locked. And uh, some of you guys will probably already understand what's going to happen in here. Because if you have an array of T flip flops, you can make them work as a counter. Uh, in case you don't know, what's, what, what are these patterns that you see with the lamps in there? Uh, they are called uh, binary, and this is a binary counter. <laughs> a very simple binary counter that you can do with this uh, device. Yeah, and uh, also the cool thing about this one is besides not using any pistons or anything, uh, you can reset those by clicking those lines in here. So yeah, if I click in here, I can reset the count at any time, which is important uh, to some applications. There is also uh, another interesting behavior that I can show you. It's the same exact circuit, but instead of giving it a two tick pulse, which makes each individual unit behave as a T flip flop, I'm gonna give it anything lo longer than, than two ticks. So three ticks is going to be enough in this case. So if I click the lever now uh, and keep doing it, it will turn on uh, all the, the devices one by one. <laughs> so this could be used as a progress bar. And uh, if I want to reset the progress, I can just power these lines in here and everything will reset. Uh, this is a, a mechanism that you will see frequently used in combo, uh, combination locks as well. Uh, and what this does is uh, if the player uh, hits the correct button uh, at the, the time for orders, order sensitive combination locks, uh, the player will progress, but any mistake made by the player will reset the state. So yeah, and once you turn on all the latches, then something unlocks. This is how some combination locks work. So this is already very interesting. From one device, we are, we are able to do so much stuff. And here is a final example uh, of something that you can do. So this uh, in white here is the exact same circuit you saw back there. But then instead of pressing the buttons to, uh, to reset, I just hook, hook them up to this redstone line in here. And uh, if I press this button, this will act as a reset. And in front of this, uh, I created a, a different circuit. Uh, you, you will see what it does. So yeah, uh, if we give it a critic pulse or longer, once again, it will behave uh, as uh, as a latch, right? Uh, and what this circuit does is instead of uh, lighting up all the lamps uh, along the path, it will turn on only the last one. So this uh, works pretty much like a shift register, as you can see. Every time you give it a pulse, it progresses. So yeah, next time it's going to be in here and then you can use this. So this basically, this blue circuit basically converts this signal, uh, all those lamps on into just a single lamp If you ca in case you want to select something like this. Uh, and uh, if you're wondering what happens if you, uh, when you get to the end, I will show you now. So the last lamp is selected now, and uh, if we click flick, uh, flick in the lever, there are no more devices to be turned on, so it won't reset. But of course, you can hook this up to another line in here, and then can hit the button, and everything will reset. So this is a shift register with uh, reset capabilities, which is which is interesting. Uh, and also, uh, I can show you the behavior. So this is how uh, the, the shift register or the, the progressing thing works. Let's see how this behaves if we uh, give it a two tick pulse so it starts working as a counter again. So this is two, this is three in binary. I'm reading uh, this, by the way. And this is uh, four. So as you can see, <laughs> Uh, it does pretty much the same thing. So this will turn on according to the most significant bit to this thing here. So yeah, sorry guys, if you're not very experienced with redstone and things like that, but uh, this is kind of more technical and uh, a little bit advanced uh, kind of video compared to some other videos that I make. So yeah, you can use this because this kind of represents the power of this thing. I don't know, something like this. Every, every time the, the binary value uh, doubles this, uh, this lamp changes, so you can use this for some mechanisms uh, in computers in Minecraft or something like that. So this is kind of interesting. And here we are guys, with a ridiculously simple old school device that can do so many things.
<laughs> works as a D flip flop, works as a latch, can be a counter, can be a progress bar. And uh, I think tomorrow I'm going to release a video where you will be able to see this being used in a, uh, a lot more practical way. So you guys, please make sure to not miss uh, tomorrow's video. Other than that, guys, I hope this was useful information to you. Thank you very much for watching. Hope to see you back soon.